Um, Stefania Ebley uh, will be presenting a topic called a notion of harmonic clustering in simplicial complexes. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the notion of harmonic clustering for simplicial complexes. This is a joint work with Garth Freeman, a former postdoc in our lab at DPFL. Well, as the title suggests, the main object of our work are simplicial complexes. These are higher dimensional versions of graph which are built not only by using vertices and edges, but they include also triangles, tetrahedra, and so on in higher dimension. In this way, one can encode and fold the interaction between objects. For instance, if we have four actors playing together in a movie, they can be represented by a tetrahedra in the simplicial complex. The main goal of our work was to extend one of the most famous clustering algorithms for vertices of a graph to simplicial complexes. The name of the algorithm is harmonic clustering, and it retrieves information not only on the vertices of the simplicial complex, but also on the edges on the triangles and so on. So before going into the details of the algorithm, I want to fix some notation. We will call the vertices of the simplicial complex the zero simplices, the edges the one simplices, uh, the triangles the two simplices, and any simplex of dimension p will be called a p simplex. So as I said, uh, our original motivation was the spectral clustering algorithm, which is one of the most used technique in machine learning to detect communities of the vertices of a graph. And surprisingly, the algorithm of this uh, technique is very, very simple. It takes as an input a graph with set of vertices V and edges E. And then the idea is to compute a matrix associated to this graph and use the eigenvectors to project the vertices to a lower dimensional Euclidean space. There one can cluster using any, any method and pull back the cluster on the original graph. So the matrix associated to the graph is called the graph Laplacian, and it's given by the, the difference between the degree matrix and the adjacency matrix of the vertices. One computes the eigenvectors associated to the non-zero eigenvalues of this matrix. In particular, one has to choose k eigenvectors associated to the k smallest non-zero eigenvalues. And one projects the vertices of the graph to RK using these eigenvectors. Then in RK, one cluster points using any, any method. And finally, one pulls back the cluster on the original graph on the vertices. So let me go through this example again very quickly. So we had this graph. We compute the graph Laplacian associated to this graph and compute the two eigenvectors associated with the two smallest non-zero eigenvalues mm -hmm. to project the vertices into R2 as shown on the figure of the right. Then we use k-min with k equals 2 to find these two communities, and we pull them back on the original graph, and we found the following clusters given by the vertices in, uh, in orange and vertices in blue, which, which detect highly densely connected component of the graph. In fact, the spectral clustering algorithm has a nice mathematical interpretation. The eigenvectors of the graph Laplacian associated to the smallest non-zero eigenvalues detect almost disconnected component of the graph. It's important to stress that, in, uh, in general, one discards the eigenvectors associated to the zero eigenvalues, because this eigenvector encodes information only on the connected component of the graph. And if the graph is already connected, uh, the, the information is just redundant. But we will see how in the harmonic clustering algorithm, we will also use the eigenvectors associated to the zero eigenvalues of the graph Laplacian. So, as I said, the harmonic clustering algorithm was motivated by the spectral clustering algorithm, and the idea was to extend it to have information not only on the vertices of the simplicial complex, but also to retrieve information on the p-simplices for any dimension p. So the input of the algorithm is a general simplicial complex, and we want to get informative clustering for any fixed dimension p. For example, if we fix p equals zero, so we are clustering the vertices of the simplicial complex, we want to get information on the zero cavities, which are the connected component of the simplicial complex. If we fix p equals one, so we want to cluster the edges of the simplicial complex, we want to retrieve information on the one cavities, which are the the cavities which are enclosed by edges. And if we fix p equals two, we want to get information about the two cavities, which are the cavities enclosed by triangles. Uh, and so on, for any dimension, we wanted to get information about the 
P cavities, which are the cavities enclosed by the P synthesis. The idea was to follow in the same pipeline of the spectral clustering gathering, however, with two main differences. The first one is that the graph Laplacian has to be substituted by a matrix associated to the P synthesis, which is called the P Laplacian, and it's a well studied mathematical object, uh, which encode the adjacency of the P simplices with the P minus one simplices and the P plus one simplices. The second important difference is that in the spectral clustering algorithm, one uses the eigenvector of the Laplacian to project the vertices to a lower dimensional Euclidean space. We will use here the eigenvectors associated with the, non uh, the zero eigenvalues to project the P simplices to a lower Euclidean dimensional space. So in case P equals zero, we will have the zero Laplacian, which corresponds to the graph Laplacian. And computing the eigenvector in the spectrum of this Laplacian, uh, give information about the zero cavities, which are the connected component of the simplicial complex. But let's see more in details how this algorithm works. So our goal it was to cluster simplices of a fixed dimension P in a general simplicial complex. So the input is a general simplicial complex in which we fix P, the dimension of the P synthesis we want to cluster. So for example, uh, on the right we can see a, a simplicial complex given by a triangulation of a sphere. Um, I don't know if you see there are two one cavities attached here and here. And we wanted to cluster the edges of this simplicial complex. So one computes the P Laplacian for P, the dimension fixed of the synthesis we wanted to cluster, and the eigen, M eigenvectors in the kernel of this Laplacian, so the eigenvectors associated with the two eigenvalues. And one uses them to project the P simplices to Rm. So in the case of the example on the right, we had this simplicial complex. We wanted to cluster the edges. We compute the one Laplacian, which has two eigenvectors in, the, in a, its kernel. And we used to project the vertices to R2, as shown in this figure. But then, when in the Euclidean space, one is to cluster point, as in the spectral clustering algorithm. In our case, we cluster point by grouping point lying on different inner subspaces. So from a mathematical point of view, this is a kind of a mystery for us, why this is happening. And I don't have time to go into the details of this part, but if you want, you can ask me questions later. However, it's important to say that we cluster by finding points lying on these different linear subspaces, and points that lie on the intersection of different linear subspaces are considered unclustered, because they, they can belong to different uh, linear subspaces. So in this case, we have this line and this line, given by the point in uh, orange and point in blue, which correspond to two different clusters. And finally, one pulls back the cluster on the original simplicial complex, and we got the edges in, uh, in orange and the edges in, uh, in blue. And as I said before, this cluster have a nice mathematical interpretation. They, are, they correspond to the one cavities, or they detect the one cavities present in our original simplicial complex. Another maybe more illustrative example is the puncture plane. This is a simplicial complex shown on the, on the right, which is given by a triangulation of a plane in which we took out three one cavities. And then we apply the harmonic clustering algorithm to cluster the edges of the simplicial complex. We obtain three clusters given by the edges in uh, blue, orange, and the green, which cor correspond or like loop around the three one cavities present in our simplicial complex. So also in this case, we are able to detect the one cavities in our original simplicial complex. Another example is the torus. Uh, I don't know how many of you know what a torus is, but you can think about it as a, um, a surface given by a donut. We build a simplicial complex by triangle in the torus, and then also in this case, we wanted to cluster the edges of the simplicial complex. So we applied the harmonic clustering algorithm for p equals one and we obtain two clusters, given by the edges in blue and the edges in orange, which also in this case correspond to the two one cavities present in the torus. The one cavity is looping around like this, and the one cavity is looping around like this. So I showed you three examples in which we apply the harmonic clustering algorithm to 
two edges of a simplicial complex. However, the algorithm can be applied to simplicities of any dimension p. For instance, in this case, we had a simplicial complex given by a triangulation of two spheres attached by a filling cylinder. And we wanted to cluster the triangles of this simplicial complex. So we applied the harmonic clustering algorithm for p equals two. So in the case one wants to cl uh, cluster triangles. And we obtained two clusters given by the edges in blue and the edges in orange, which correspond to the two cavities in the simplicial complex given by the two spheres. So it's also in this case, we're able to detect cavities in the simplicial complex. So I showed you how in practice that algorithm works. However, we lack some mathematical interpretation of the eigenvectors associated with the zero eigenvalues of the p Laplacian. These are the eigenvectors we use to project the p simplices to a lower dimensional Euclidean space. And probably a better understanding of this object would also tell us why clustering by finding linear subspaces give us cluster uh, on the original simplicial complex that detect cavities. Moreover, I would like as a final goal, it would be nice seeing this algorithm apply to real world data. So thank you very much. So we have time for a few questions here. Uh, all right, let's start. So for the graph one, you said that you had to choose the number of clusters, but for your algorithm, it, it suggested? No, usually, OK. Um, so we know that our algorithm detects the number of cavities. Uh, so we, we, also, we also know that the number of eigenvectors, in the, there is a correspondence between the number of cavities and the eigenvectors in the kernel of Laplacian. So we know exactly how many eigenvectors to compute by just computing the one in the kernel. Oh, the one about, okay, there's an upgrade. Once you um, the Laplacian is a true length, so in that case, there is a no um, zero um, the eigenvectors. Okay, uh, full length, okay, full length, okay, um, the um, matrix, you don't have to okay, any zero, um, zero eigenvectors. I mean, um, zero eigenvectors. But let's say you don't mess about it, okay, you said uh, some eigenvectors, yes. real okay, eigenvectors, the first eigenvalue is the zeros, right? Yes. But it's a, when it's a matrix, it's a full length. That means that there's a no with energy. The, this, the, the, the matrix we are using, the pila is. Can you repeat yeah. the question, Stefania? Oh, yes. Can you repeat the question for us? Um, so how, as yeah. far as I understood, is, uh, uh, if we don't know, how the matrix is? How do we know that there are uh, eigenvectors? Okay, the, my question is starting from the I, I don't know why they uh, why the methodology using the okay zero Laplacian okay no zero um the eigen zero value eigenvectors but it's, uh, sometimes okay if the the matrix is the full length there is there is a no okay I mean the, uh, what is that redundancy in the okay in the case of the um there is a all uh, the eigenvectors uh, the how do you no, the, okay. So, yes. Yeah, okay. In the case of a graph, if a graph is, is connected, we know that the Laplacian has one zero eigenvectors for how the Laplacian is constructed. In case we have a simplicial complex, so since there is a correspondence between the cavities of the simplicial complex and the eigenvectors in its kernel, if the simplicial complex has no cavities, then there won't be eigenvectors in its kernel. So we won't apply our algorithm. And also, the, for the scope of our algorithm that we use the eigenvectors to detect cavities, if there are not cavities, we won't. Oh, that's a point. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, one more question, and then we can move on. Is the PILA puzzle informed by um, taking intersections of faces of dimension P and using that as an incidence matrix? Yeah, the idea is more or less that you take. You're looking at a P simplex and uh, you're looking if it's adjacent with a P plus one simplex. So for example, an edge, if it has a triangle, uh, and also if two edges are adjacent via a node. Uh, so yeah, it's the construction is so adjacent in an up and down dimension. Okay, I think we have. Thank you very much.